From Stockholm, Sweden, this is CardioSource video news coverage of ESC Congress 2010. Well, it's Sunday here at ESC, and we have a clinical trial update presentation on one of the hottest areas in cardiology using the transaortic valve implantation for aortic stenosis. And I'm joined here by Dr. Olaf Wendler from King's College in London, who is uh, presenting data on risk stratification from the source registry. Do you want to tell us a little bit about the source registry? Well, the source registry is um, is uh, a registry which focuses on the patient's uh, treatment using transcatheter aortic valve implantation in the first year after commercialization using a device of the Edward Sapien bioprosthesis. And the interesting thing about the registry is that this uh, device is a device which can be deployed by a surgeon for the apex of the less left uh, chest wall, um, apex of the left ventricle, or through the femoral artery by a cardiologist and uh, the registry is uh, actually looking at the results of these patients at 30 days and one year after surgery. Well, this is a terrific one where I guess you have an interdisciplinary team that might individualize which approach might be best for which patient? Yes, we discuss actually every patient who is referred to us after they have their initial investigations, which focus on how um, can the potential valve be uh, de deployed in the patient from the technical point of view, accesses the, um, the uh, or investigates the morbidity, comorbidity of the patient. After we have all this information together, we meet as a team between cardiologists, surgeons, even anesthetists, geriatrists, and to find and identify the best mode uh, of treatment uh, for this patient or maybe even of medical um, treatment if, a technical, uh, if for technical reason the TAVI treatment is not suitable. Well this is, uh, gets right into what you presented, one year mortality data. What did you find and who were the patients in this cohort? Well, for the for the total group, the um, survival is uh, 76 percent. There are for the two approaches, the transapic and the transfemoral, it's a little bit different in the way that the transfemoral has better outcomes in terms of survival of 81 percent at one year. Um, the transapic has a little bit worse uh, survival of 71 percent. That has something to do with the fact that for the transapic approach, we usually choose patients who have access problems, access problems in terms of femoral arteries who are too small or who are diseased with atherosclerosis. So the group of patients who have the transapical procedure, they are usually the sicker kind of patient in terms of comorbidities, and that's the reason why we expect different kind of outcomes in terms of one-year survival. Yeah. And then you looked at what are the predictors of uh, mortality at one year, so a nice long-term outcome. What kind of factors did you find? Yeah, due to the design of the of the of the registry, we have very complete data on this consecutive group of patients. We have a very robust data set. Um, the um, the uh, what we identified was that the conventional um, variables and demographic risk factors for patients um, don't work as well for this group as uh, compared to surgical cohorts. And the reason is, of course, that in surgical cohorts, a certain risk group, very high risk patients who were not considered for surgery never underwent treatment, whereas here with the TAVI procedure we have patients who go into this program although they have not been surgical candidates in the past. What we find is we are able to identify some variables which have a predictor, which are a predictor of one year mortality. On the other hand, we also realize there is uh, and information we miss at the moment. We don't have, for example, the good information on frailty of patients, on exercise capacity on patients, on where patients are in their life cycle, which would be, of course, very important because these patients are of high age and the mean age of the trial is 82 years. So that's the reason why it's at the moment difficult to develop a risk score, and that's our task for the future. Oh, it's terrific. Well, Wanda, thank you very much. It's uh, the really a key new area in cardiology and understanding who should and who shouldn't get uh, a new treatment is uh, is key. So we'll look forward to the uh, emerging results. Well, I'm Chris Cannon for CardioSource Video News.